This is the Electric Fields Homework Booklet, questions 31 and 32. A positive ion has a charge to mass ratio of 2.4 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. You are told this ion is held stationary in a vertical electric field. You need to choose which line in the table shows both the strength and the direction of this electric field. So first of all you need to get your head around the situation. So here is a positive ion and I have drawn two plates to provide a vertical electric field. If the iron is held stationary, then the forces acting on it um, must um, have a resultant of zero. So we have a, the weight acting down and acting upwards, we must have the force due to the electric field. So this means that the lower plate must be positive and the upper plate negative, leading to an upward electric field. So that limits uh, our choices down to these two values here. So now to look at the numerical side to the question. We're given the charge to mass ratio. It may not be immediately obvious how that's going to be used, but think about the forces once again. So the electric force, charge times field strength, is equal to the weight of the iron. Rearranging this, we have that the electric field strength is equal to the weight divided by the charge on the iron. Looking at this and thinking about the definition uh, of charge to mass ratio, we can rearrange the equation and uh, divide both the top and the bottom of it by m, leading to the gravitational field strength divided by the charge to mass ratio. This leads us to an answer consistent with um, the value for A. Next you are shown an electron at a point in a uniform electric field at an instant when it is stationary. So just look at the diagram, think about uh, the field lines acting in this direction, think about the electron and its negative charge. You're asked to draw an arrow to show the direction of the electrostatic force acting on the electron. Well, a electric field, the field lines always point from positive to negative. So looking at the electron, we realise that it would experience a force to the left, acting towards the positive side of the field. Next, you're asked to state and explain what will happen to the magnitude of this electrostatic force acting on the electron as it starts to move in this field. Well, if you think about equations you know to do with electrostatic force, you should remember that it is equal to the charge times the field strength. So in this particular case, that would be the charge on the electron uh, multiplied by the electric field strength. Now, you were told in the question that this was a uniform electric field. So for that reason, um, it means that E must be constant. So since E is constant, the force will not change when the electron changes its position within this field. And next we have two diagrams which show a stationary electron in a non-uniform field this time. Um, and uh, the second diagram shows a stationary proton in exactly the same field and position. You are asked to state and explain how the electrostatic force on the proton compares with that on the electron. 
So again, you might think about the equation we used before, that the electrostatic force equals the charge times the electric field strength. Now you can remember that the charge on a proton is the same size as the charge on an electron, but has the opposite sign. This leads to the final outcome that the two forces must be equal in size, but act in opposite directions. Next, you are told that each of the particles starts to move from the position shown in the diagrams. You are asked to state and explain how the magnitude of the initial acceleration of the proton compares to that of the electron. So remember here the equation F equals ma and the acceleration is the resultant force divided by the mass. Applying this to our two uh, charged particles, we remember that the proton has a much greater mass than the electron. This means that for the proton, the acceleration will be much smaller. Next, you are asked to describe and explain what will happen to the acceleration of each of the particles as they continue to move in the electric field. Here you're going to be taking into account the fact that the electric field strength will change with the position of the particle. If we just look back at the diagram, you will see that the separation of the field lines changes. So here where the field lines are far apart, the field is weaker, and here where they are closer together, the field is stronger. So you will need to consider how each of these particles will move. So the electron, we already said, experiences a force to the left. That will move it towards a region of weaker electric field whereas the proton will experience a force to the right, moving it to, towards a region where the field is stronger. So to summarise those ideas, you can say that as the electron moves to the left, its acceleration will decrease because the strength of the electric field decreases. Whereas the proton moves to the right and its acceleration will increase as the strength of the electric field increases. So here the key point was to realise that the strength of the electric field is related to the concentration of the field lines. Next, you are told that the line spectrum of neon gas contains a prominent red line of a given wavelength. You are asked to show that the energy required to excite neon atoms so that they emit light of this wavelength is about 2 electron volts. So you need to think here in terms of photon energy because um, photons of this red light will be emitted and their energy is given by the equation HF, where H is the Planck constant. And since we are working in terms of wavelength, it is more convenient to use HC divided by lambda. Substituting in the values using the data sheet to find H leads to an answer of 3.06 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Finally, you need to convert joules to electron volts by dividing by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Here it's important to state an answer to more significant figures than the value suggested within the question. Next, uh, we look at the context of a, an illuminated shop sign with a neon discharge tube within it. You are told that a potential difference of 4,500 volts 
is applied across the electrodes, so that is um, across these two points here. And these electrodes are 180 millimetres apart. You can assume that the electric field inside the tube is uniform and you are asked to calculate the minimum distance that a free electron would have to move from rest in order to excite the red spectral line that we referred to previously. Here in this context you are thinking about work done on a free electron that is accelerated by the potential difference between these two plates. That electrical work um, gives energy to the electron which can then be used to excite um, electrons within the neon atom and then later lead to the production of the photons corresponding to red light. So the electrical work done is 1.91 electron volts. This is the value that we worked out previously to match the value of the photon energy. So we're considering um, photon energy having come from energy of an electron that wasn't accelerated by the potential difference. So that means that the electron would need to move through a potential difference of 1.91 volts in order to gain 1.91 electron volts of energy. Now between the two plates we have a potential difference of 4,500 volts. That's across a distance of 180 millimetres. We just want to scale down now here and find um, the distance that would correspond to the smaller potential difference of 1.91 volts. Remember this is a uniform field so if we measured the voltage at any point between these two plates it should just be decreasing in a linear fashion with distance. So here we're just using a scale factor if we just have the smaller voltage of 1.91 volts that would correspond to a fraction of the distance here which would be 1.91 divided by 4500. This leads us to 7.64 times 10 to the minus 5 metres. Here I've shown you an alternative way of thinking of how to solve the problem. You know it's a uniform electric field so you could calculate the electric field strength as the potential difference divided by the separation of the plates. This value is a constant, so it is then uh, straightforward to reuse the same equation in order to find the distance that corresponds to the smaller potential difference.